basement Level vibes with another one Another one Straight up Blackness I are I who tell the truth Mark Benscop Defend the ghetto youth Mark Benscop Radio station is the fruit Mark Benscop Straight up from the root Mark Benscop I who tell the truth Mark Benscop Defend the ghetto youth Mark Benscop Radio station is the fruit Mark Benscop Straight up from the root Mark Benscop Benscop I do it for the love Him not do it for no money Straight up Him attack Educating everybody Big up my friends and big up my family. Turn on the radio, catch the vibes, it's integrity. Straight up, Ben's cop stands for unity. One people, one nation, one destiny. Free up the truth in at the air, even the blind can see. Mm. The deaf can need the dumb can talk, the cripple can walk. Boom. I who tell the truth. Mark Ben's cop, defend the ghetto youth. Mark Ben's cop, radio station is the fruit. Mark Ben's cop, straight up from the root. Mark Benscop, I who tell the truth. Mark Benscop, defend the ghetto youth. Mark Benscop, radio station is the fruit. Mark Benscop, straight up from the root. Mark Benscop, we are figured around. Grab a seat and sit down. Pay attention, education, liberation. We are fist and strong. Benscop, the pun, the radio, lively up the program. Everybody call somebody and let them turn and tune and pun the radio. And cut the boom song We boom it up already We have to boom it up again Expose and reveal him I who tell the truth Mark Benscop Defend the ghetto youth Mark Benscop Radio station is the fruit Mark Benscop Straight up from the root Mark Benscop I who tell the truth Mark Benscop Defend the ghetto youth Mark Benscop Radio station is the fruit Mark Benscop Straight up from the root Mark Benscop Benscop I do it for the love Him not do it for no money Straight up Him attack Educating everybody Big up my friends And big up my family Turn on the radio Catch the vibes It's integrity Straight up Benscop Stands for unity One people One nation One destiny Free up the truth In the air Even the blind can see mm. The deaf can lay The dumb can talk The cripple can walk Boom I who tell the truth Mark Benscop, defend the ghetto youth. Mark Benscop, radio station is the fruit. Mark Benscop, straight up from the root. Mark Benscop, I who tell the truth. Mark Benscop, defend the ghetto youth. Mar Hello, this is attorney Shellen Washington, owner and founder of the Washington Law Firm, located at 455 Utica Avenue in Brooklyn, New York. We're specialized in medical malpractice, personal injuries, matrimonial law, and landlord and tenant. If you're in need of legal representation, please give us a call today. The number to call is 718-877-3100. Consultation is free at no cost to you. So call us today to see if we can be of any assistance to your legal needs. Again, the phone number to call us is 718-877-3100. Basement, level vibes, with another one, another one, straight up, blackness I are. Aye. I who tell the truth, Mark Benscop, defend the ghetto youth, Mark Benscop, radio station is the fruit, Mark Benscop, straight up from the root, Mark Benscop, I who tell the truth, Mark Benscop, defend the ghetto youth, Mark Benscop, radio station is the fruit, Mark Benscop, straight up from the root. Mark Benz, Benz, I do it for the love, him not do it for no money, straight up, him attack, educating everybody, big up my friends, and big up my family, turn on the radio, catch the vibes, it's integrity, straight up, Benz, cop stands for unity, one people, one nation, one destiny, free up the truth in at the air, even the blind can see, mm. the deaf can lay, the dumb can talk, the cripple can walk, boom, I who tell the truth, Mark Benz, cop, defend the ghetto you. Mark Benscop, radio station is the fruit Mark Benscop, straight up from the root 
Marbrain's Cup, a who tell the truth? Marbrain's Cup, defend the ghetto youth. Marbrain's Cup, radio station is the fruit. Marbrain's Cup, straight up from the root. Marbrain's Cup, we are figured around. Grab a seat and sit down, pay attention. Education, liberation, we are fist and strong. Benz Cup, the pond, the radio, lively up the program. Everybody call somebody and let them turn and tune and pond the radio and cut the boom song. We boom it up already, we have to boom it up again. Expose and reveal them. I who tell the truth. Mark Benz Cup, defend the ghetto youth. Mark Benz Cup, radio station is the truth. Mark Benz Cup, straight up from the root. Mark Benz Cup, I who tell the truth. Mark Benz Cup, defend the ghetto youth. Mark Benz Cup, radio station is the truth. Mark Benz Cup, straight up from the root. Mark Benz Cup, Cup I do it for the love, him not do it for no money. Straight up, him attack, educating everybody. Big up my friends and big up my family. Turn on the radio, catch the vibes, it's integrity. Straight up, Benz Cup stands for unity. One people, one nation, one destiny. Free up the truth in the air, even the blank and see. Mm. The deaf can lay, the dumb can talk, the crypto can walk. Boom. I who tell the truth. Mark Benz Cup, defend the ghetto youth. Mark Benz Cup, radio station is the truth. Mark Benz Cup, straight up from the root. Mark Benz Cup, I who tell the truth. Mark Benz Cup, defend the ghetto youth. Mark Benz Cup, radio station is the truth. Mark Benz Cup, straight up from the root. Mark Benz Cup. All right, good evening. It's eight minutes after nine o'clock. My name is Mark Benchap. We are going to rock and roll for one hour. Uh, lots of things we want to talk about, uh, but we are not going to be distracted by just one story this evening. Uh, we're just not going to do that. We will address that. In fact, I will invite our, uh, I want to get a legal side of things. And so uh, that's the only time we'll be dealing with that particular situation and just to expose the PPP as a bunch of liars and vagabonds and why really they just went ahead and, and this in any other part of the world uh, concerning the story with that little girl who is said to be a, a victim, um, this little girl that is uh, 16 and it's, it's sad in terms of what they are putting this little girl through. She is 16 years old. She is being manipulated. She's being controlled by elements, wicked elements of the PPP and their gang. And so I, I say this, that she is being controlled because she's 16 years old. Her mind and her brain is not properly developed. And some of you might be saying out there, oh, she's a big woman she know what she up to and blah 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 all right fair enough i'm not going to um you know um, debate you guys on that but she's 16 years old and it is pretty obvious and i repeat it is pretty obvious that she is being manipulated by the ppp goons manipulated in every aspect that's exactly what's happening. Because if you and those of you who would have listened to her in that prepared script, there's no doubt. There is no doubt that it was prepared. Now, look, I, I know some of you might be having different views, but 16 years old. She is 16 years old. Not properly developed. Uh, she is being taken taken advantage of by powerful men, political men, corrupt, powerful political men 
in Guyana, in the PPP. And that is exactly what is happening here. And if we cannot see that and we cannot see what is happening to this little girl, she is a little girl. I mean, if you listen to what she said from that prepared script and compare to what she has been saying to others, she has been crying out for justice. It's not like she, oh, this was well prepared. She knew exactly what she was, you know, she's being taken advantage of. She needs help. I repeat, she needs help. And she has realized that in a corrupt country, under the PPP regime, that there is no way out. And somebody has been whispering to her, girl, you best get whatever you can get. Don't worry them people in the, in the coalition. Don't worry them ones who are protesting out there for you because at the end of the day, uh, you know you got to live, you got to survive. This is Guyana. It's a small country. Girl, you might as well just go out there and deny this thing and collect your little money collect your little house, whatever it is, you know what I mean? And, and that is that is that has been the norm in Guyana. That has been the norm in Guyana when it comes to these cases. So any one of you who would have listened to that prepared political speech, the prepared political speech, it was basically done to for political reasons, to attack the APNU, AFC, the coalition, to attack the protesters, to attack anyone who would have gone out there wanting to assist her. That is all. People wanted to assist her. This is not a political, this wasn't a political matter, you know. This is a criminal matter. It so happened that Everyone got together, every single one, even folks at the U.S. State Department were taking a look at this. And I'm almost certain the White House, all across the world, people were looking at this. And why do I say the State Department is because I sent several questions to them. When the U.S. Secretary of State was about to visit Guyana, I asked them specifically about that matter. And they responded. And you guys uh if you recall, you know what they say, that they hope that the justice system and so forth will do whatever that is necessary. Kind of like, hey, it's your guy's problems. You deal with that problem, but let the judicial system hope the girl gets the help that she deserves. That's what the State Department said. So people all across the world were looking at this particular situation. Now, I'm not going to give up on her just yet and throw her under the bus. Um, no because I know that she's being used by the PPP. And I say, shame to Jack Dave, shame on Jack Dave, shame on Irfan Ali, shame on Priya Manik Chan, shame on all of them who are part and par parcel of that. Shame on them, shame on the DPP. This girl, this little girl needs help. She needs help, she's confused. She might be bright, she might be bright, but she's not experienced enough to know that she's being used. Now, look at how they did it. That madman called himself what some journalist, uh, the, the craziest thing out of Guyana, the maddest psychiatric patient out of Guyana critic. They set this thing up. One day, she called in on his program from what I saw on some other stuff, because like I've said before, I don't watch garbage. I just don't. And she apparently called in to say, as if he received the thing that she sent him, the state, this statement. And so he pretended as though, oh, who is this? Who? These people really think people are, are, are that silly, are that stupid, right? That's, that's their problem. They think people are stupid. But people are not stupid. All of us aren't. At least I'm not. And I know most of you guys aren't. You're big, and I know you have lots and lots of sense, but we'll get back to that shortly. Let's look at this here. This was a statement. Uh, this is a statement coming out of this goon's mouth. Guyana's gold being smuggled. Culprits will face the consequences. That's according to this goon, Jack Deal. Now, for 23 plus years, they have been in office prior to the coalition winning in 2015. Not a single gold smuggler 
was ever brought to justice during those 23 years. There was a big gold bust in Curacao sometime, I believe, 2009, 2008, sometime back then. And allegations were leveled against, I think, fingers were pointing in the direction of Shell Mohammed. Allegations, mind you. The then Minister of Natural Resources was Robert Passad, who happens to be the quote-unquote foreign secretary now. So he's all over the place, uh, flying around as though nothing has happened in Guyana. Under his, uh, whenever he, uh, when he was, uh, sorry, Minister of Agriculture, he was also the Minister of Natural Resources. Then there was this big gold bust, gold heist in Curacao. A lot of those guys who were in that ship were arrested. They were detained. Many of them didn't want to return to Guyana. And the fingers were pointed at Shell Muhammad. And so Jack Dio cannot, and, and, and the then minister, Robert Passad, who happens to be the nephew-in-law of Jack Dio, of course, he's married to Jack Dio's niece, Kamini. And so Robert Passad promised that there's going to be an investigation, there's going to, and it went dead. It went dead. The fact of the matter is Jack Dale nor the PPP were prepared to prosecute any of those gold smugglers. They never did then. They never did nothing during the course of the three plus years that they have been installed into office. But now, now they suddenly, now he suddenly, after the Reuters report, is coming out to basically, you know, that's, this is something that they think Guyanese people are stupid. And so he's out basically to brainwash the Guyanese people that, look, Guyana's gold being smuggled, culprits will face the consequences. That's what Jack Dave is saying. But this is all lies because they set up the gold board to rob the system, to rob the Guyanese populace, to destroy the country, and to have their friends and cronies smuggle gold out of the country. That is what they are about. Folks, do not believe this crap. There's a rap song, I believe, back in the days. Uh, I don't know when our operator uh, gets Michelle on Washington, attorney at law on with us for this evening. I'm not sure if she remembers this song. Don't believe the hype. Don't, don't believe the hype. Uh, sorry about that, guys. I'm not good at rapping. But this is exactly what it is. I'm saying to you guys, do not believe the hype. Do not believe the hype. Before we go uh, to Miss Washington, she's with us. Look at what this guy, Mohammed, is saying. The lies and propaganda continue at its best. The lies and propaganda. Oh, give me a break. What lies? What propaganda? Of course, they're going to want to say that, right? The lies and the propaganda. Holy smoke. He might as well just, you know, they were parading in a plane the other day. All they can do is probably just fly into the bush and back. And if ever he's looking for a waiter, there's always a famous waiter in Guyana. Good evening to you, Miss Washington. Good evening, Mark. Good evening. Good evening to all your uh, listeners out there tonight. Your voice is a little low. I don't know if it's you or it's me. It's probably me, but let's start right over again. Good evening. How are you doing? Good evening, Mark. Good evening, Mark. I am well. And good evening to all of your listeners out there tonight. I want to say a special shout out and good evening to June Carmichael tonight. Shout out goes to June Carmichael. Thank you, June, for all your support. All right. Um... June Carmichael, uh, you're getting a special shout out. Uh, let's uh, let's begin with a little uh, something. I know you probably heard of the story that there's this individual who went on American Airlines and um, addressed a, a, a flight attendant as waiter. And because of that, we are hearing, uh, hey, you're a waiter, right? Uh, was that sufficient reason? Because we're not getting the truth out of a lot of stories coming out of Guyana. Uh, you waiter, and then the pilot turns the plane back and takes it to JFK. 
American Airlines. And then we also heard that the next day when they were flying out, that um, the, the, the manner in which Guyanese are being spoken to, uh, sometimes it leaves a lot, lot of us to wonder whether uh, flights into Guyana by some of these airlines uh, with uh, predominantly Caucasians and so forth is that they the manner in which they treat Guyanese and talk down to people. Uh, when when we fly to other places like to Europe or other places, the treatment is quite different. I don't know, maybe because of culture, maybe because of race. What is your take on that waiter issue? Just one minute on it at all. We're not spending much on that. I mean, I'm not even sure what the make of the waiter issue. Um, if the person said waiter, I mean, the pronunciation might have been an issue, but I'm not even sure what to make of that, Mark. Um, if it had anything to do with the person's race, I don't know. I really don't know because it seems like so frivolous that somebody would say something like that and the pilot would um, turn the flight around. Um, it doesn't seem to make any sense to me. Not much sense at all. But if there's any waiter watching this show this evening, good evening to you guys. Waiter, nothing is wrong with being a waiter. Absolutely nothing. But there's more to that story. All right, Miss Washington, uh, we have another story coming out of Guyana. Of course, this is this uh, the little girl. Uh, she, I don't know, the PPP is parading this little girl. They're embarrassing her. They're destroying her life. All manner of things because they want to cover up whatever crime that was committed. But before we get your comment, please uh, let us go to um, let us go to this clip first. A little piece of this clip that I want our listeners to hear, um, and then we will. Sorry about that. Um, and then we will ask their. Um, we will check their views on this entire situation um just one second please all right um we, we will get to that tape and then we will get your comment please miss washington um I have a mark. I have a very, very um, serious problem uh, with the what what the PPP is doing with this young woman. Sure, go ahead. I have a, a very, very serious problem. Um, if you look at the news, for people who've been following the news recently, um, they'll see um, their probe into um, there's some sort of probe into the aftermath of the election in terms of Donald Trump, and one of the issues that is being raised is witness tampering. And I'm seeing a lot. Um, I've seen uh, the statement that somebody's put on their Facebook page claiming that this statement was made by this young woman. Whether it is or it isn't, the fact of the matter is there's something real. And, you know, I don't know how much of a big of a deal it's made in Ghana, but witness tampering is really serious. And it just goes to highlight that in Ghana, victims are not accorded any type of protection. This young woman came forward. She made allegations of rape against Darmla. Now, look at the facts, people of Ghana. Daram Lal is somebody in a position of influence, a position of power. Why? Because it's a public office. When you hold a public office, especially young people, they hold you to a certain high esteem and they tend to respect you. So you tend to have a certain level of influence over those people. So when you put Daram Lal in a position like that and you have a pedophilia, you have an affinity for children, he likes to sleep with children. I mean, it's a dangerous position he was in to begin with. He shouldn't have been there because there must have been allegations circulating for a long time that Dharam Lal is into young children, number one. Number two, if somebody comes and makes such serious allegations that they were raped by a public official, the first response that the government should do is ensure that there's proper investigation and proper safety for the young person who made those allegations. Because as I understand, there's statements going around that might have been from this young lady. I don't know where it's from. I can't vouch to say it is or it isn't. But the fact is she seemed to have been fearful for her safety, 
fearful for her life, which is understood. Any victim in a situation like that would be fearful to go public with their story and they'll be concerned about the repercussions after the story hits the public. And in this instance, it seems like this young woman was very concerned as to what may happen to her if it gets public that she's making these allegations against Darren Lau. And I think it is very despicable. It's disgraceful that now people are using the same young woman to put a statement out saying that she did not intend for this to happen. She did not intend to cause any um, public pu publicity to the incident. It's a form of witness tampering. Whoever is going after this young woman and whoever is causing her to make these statements should be prosecuted. They're interfering with a main witness in a potential criminal case. Because if she changes her mind, and I don't know if she could have changed her mind in the future, but now with this happening, Chances are she will never be able to change her mind because then we have coons, we have people who talks going after her, going after her and soliciting statements from her. That is a form of witness tampering. And on the different circumstances, those very people who are going after this young woman and soliciting statement, they themselves should be prosecuted. The PPP is very dangerous because if they're going to use, go to this length and to this extent, I mean, in any normal developed country, something like this happened, what would have been the result if there was no prosecution? No one would have gone after the young woman to solicit statement because serious rape is a very, very serious allegations. And most countries understand that victims in situation like that, they need to pre be protected mentally, physically, psychologically. They would have been going through a lot emotionally. But instead of trying to protect the victim, we have dangerous thugs going after her and soliciting statement. And they think this looks good. They think they're doing something good. They think they're they're doing something for the better good of the society by soliciting a statement from a, an alleged rape victim and going and post it on social media. I'm telling you, these people have no moral scruples or no moral compass who are doing this sort of things. You cannot do something of this sort in any developed country, any country with people with common sense and a little bit of... Um, intelligence would know that in a situation like this, you don't go and solicit a statement from a rape victim to exonerate the criminal. You can't. It's just morally, ethically wrong. And in, in, in any event, it engaged legal implication because it could be potentially tampering with witness, tampering with a witness, because now that statement would prevent her from even ever trying in the future to prosecute Dharam Lal. So this is despicable what the PPP is using her for. And somebody, it's, I mean, I don't know if Guyana has any laws that protects witness and there's any such crime as witness tampering, but if there isn't, they should be witness tampering in Guyana because this is wrong. No one should go after her and solicit any statement. They should leave her alone. Let her be. If she wants to come back again at some time in the future, let her leave her to be able to do that. Don't go after her. That's despicable. You have poor judgment. You have no moral scruples, whoever is doing this, to go after her like that, in that manner. And if it's a, somebody's acting on the instructions of Dharam Lal or anyone in the PPP, as a matter of fact, those people need to be pulled out and be brought into condemnation. It is wrong. Absolutely wrong. You're now joining us. Shalon Washington is with us. We thank you so much, uh, guys, for sharing the link. We'd want to go now to uh, the recording so that you guys can uh, get a couple of minutes of what's really happening. And shame, as Miss Washington indicated earlier, shame on those who are behind this. And I know that there are some folks who are writing to some of the embassies there in Georgetown to bring their attention to these perpetrators who are behind uh, this script, this political script coming from the PPP and their gang. Uh, some of them rushed to Suriname quickly uh, after they would have committed this, uh, this questionable act. But let's go to the young lady. You guys get to be the judge this evening for just about a minute or so of what she has to say here. With my face attached to this entire conflict, I wish to say that this is my resolution. And I will not reiterate further or speak of this again in the future. 
I hope this brings clarity to those of you that are dissatisfied and continue to question my integrity. Here in my hands, I have a detailed account of what I will be addressing today. Firstly, I'd like to say that at no point would anyone, all inclusive, agree to release such an explicit letter about themselves into the public's domain. I know how Guyanese are, and I did not come on here to be disrespectful, but these are things that don't sit right with me, and I had to say something about it. This letter was not written by me. If you're a wise analysis... All right, uh, break that down. Uh, all along, she met with the police. She allegedly went back to the so-called crime scene. Uh, she was cooperating. She spoke with uh, uh, officials of the child care. She spoke with other uh, professionals. Uh, at no point in time did they stop to say that she doesn't want to proceed. But here it is now that we're getting this here to say, she's coming out now to say uh, that it wasn't her who posted X, Y, and Z and so forth. Take the first bite of that, please, Miss Washington. Mark, those those things could be easily verified. If I wanted to verify whether it came from an account that belongs to her, I could easily get an expert, one of those technically savvy young people in this country, to do a trace, an IP trace on any message that was posted on Facebook or any social media. If I really want to find out, I can. And so can anybody here tonight listening who live in a developed country and have access to software engineers or anybody who specialize in tracing IP. And that could bring the truth forward. But my take on this is really, I don't believe she's acting on her own volition. I honestly believe some form of compensation was passed here because no one is insane enough to go and make a serious allegation, have the police investigate, have everyone else involved, and then turns back and say, oh, I did not do this and I did not make any statements and I wasn't involved in this. No, you know, in from the inception, there's information circulating that she expressed numerous times that she was concerned about her safety. She was concerned as to what might happen if Dharam Lal became aware of what she was saying, the information she was divulging regarding intimate details about what happened to her between her and Dharam Lal. So I would not readily go after her because one of the other things that I understand is the PPP would like to use this girl as a pawn in a chess game. And I'm not, I, I would encourage people not to fall prey to the gimmicks or the tricks of the PPP. The PPP would like to use her to turn around later and say, well, the APNU and the opposition made this a big deal when it's really not because now look what the victim is coming back and say, when really this should be frowned on by the very PPP who's encouraging her or the people who are maybe compensating her to come and say this because this is wrong to take a victim who claim rape and then turn them back to come and make it look to the public like they're a liar because this is what she's making herself out to be by making this statement that in fact she shouldn't be trusted and she's a liar but in fact we should not buy into it it's a trick the ppp intend to use this somehow to bring daram lad back on the seed in some way form or shape but i'm saying to the people of guyana we're not concerned with our statement because from day one, I've said, even if we can't rise to the level of a criminal conviction on a rape conviction, because, you know, the standard is beyond reasonable doubt. We know and we have sufficient information to let us know that Dharam Lal is a pedophile. I've said that from day one. He is a pedophile and he should never he should never be allowed to hold a public office again because he was in a position of influence where he exerts certain level of influence over this young woman. And she herself has recounted in instances where he exert the same level of influence over other young women, even younger or similar age as she is. And there are other stories like this, you know, but the people would not come out because they were compensated. So now they're, you know, they're quiet, they're, their lips are sealed because if you, 
take the compensation, then you have to be you're selling your soul to the devil. And in essence, then you have to come back and make yourself look very, very foolish to the public by making a statement of this nature. But the real bad person in this is, is not this girl. Even if she recanted her story and comes out and say it, she is not the demon here. And we need to stay focused and recognize who the real devil in this situation is. It's the PPP. It's Daram Lal. Because if they're going to go to this level to push this young woman into the public eyes, in a, to, to, to do an interview or to make a statement of this nature, they're the worst people. She should not have been in no news agency. She should take a 16-year-old girl an interviewer or take a statement of this nature from her nobody should if anything they should talk to the parent no one should because first of all she's under age she's under 18 so she really can't even for herself in any case even a civil case people know that a minor must at all times be protected by the parent the only person with legal competency to make the statement and this this just goes to show the idiots we're dealing with that they don't even know. You can't take a 60 year old and put them to make a statement like this in the public. You have to talk to the parent. You have to go through the parent. She is not of the age of legal competency. She's still a minor. She's under 16. She might be of the age to give consent to sexual intercourse, but she is not of the legal age of competency to do anything that is legally binding. So therefore, that just shows you we have a bunch of idiots just running around doing things that they don't even understand the legal implications. This young woman don't have the competency to make this statement. So Guyanese people, don't be fooled. Don't be misguided. The PPP are a bunch of clowns running around, not sure what they're doing. And whoever they use to do this, that person is a real, the best clown that we've ever seen. Mark, that person who did this, and made her make the statement deserve that award that you usually give out because she has zero competency at the age of 16 to come out and make the statement the parents are the one who has the legal right to come out to make this statement not this child so i would not even go after her i would not even say anything bad about her because she's a minor still they might be treating her as adult but the law says differently she is a minor indeed. Uh, it is on the platform of that madman calling himself Guyanese critic. Uh, he should be investigated. He should be brought to justice for this. And I, I, I know that they are, I, I suspect that there are others uh, from international waters who are taking a look at this situation and how I agree with you again and a lot of our listeners uh, that she has been taken advantage of maybe uh, financially, financial offers, who knows? Uh, we, we are not going to say that that's the main reason. We are just assuming that that may have had a heck of a lot to do with what is transpiring here right now, this illegality. But we're not hearing from the women's arm of the PBPC, the WPO. Obviously, they are quiet for reasons that we already know. And this is a shameless act being committed by the PPP and this is where we see again, shame on Irfan Ali, shame on all of those vagabonds in the PPP. Uh, let's continue with uh, with this videotape, please, recording. This led you to many conclusions. What happened to this major detail? I stand firmly by the two statements I made immediately after the letter started circulating on the internet. The first statement was given to the police, where I clearly stated that I had nothing to do with the letter circulating in the public's domain. The second statement was written by me and posted on my personal Facebook page where I distanced myself from the letter. This was never examined from all perspectives, but the public picked it up and ran with it regardless. I have since issued a third statement all right, let's stop before we continue with a third statement as we break this down. What she's saying here from this political script that she's reading from that was handed to her by elements of the PPP, corrupt individuals of the PPP, and criminals in Guyana operating, masquerading as social media influencer. Uh, we know one of them specifically sits there and interviews Jack Dale with his propaganda. All it's about propaganda, propaganda, and criminality. 
And so let us go quickly to uh, what this young lady, a voice purporting to be hers, uh, as was released by Melissa Atwell, also known as Melly Mel. Uh, I believe that's this is where it came from. Listen to what this young lady has to say, which totally, totally contradicts this political statement that she has made moments ago. Listen to what she said, too, in this audio recording. Now you see, here's what happened. <clears throat> I'm an AC. I'm 16. I turned 16 last year, September. And this happened last year, December. I represented Region 2 at the Amor Indian Heritage pageant that he had last year, September. And that is basically how I came into contact with him. Um, I don't want my name to go out there with this because I am very much too young for this. I don't, I cannot handle confrontation. And I know for a fact that if he finds out that I am basically doing all of this right now, he might pro probably just see me as a threat and you know how that's going to go. Um, I have a whole, I've, I have the entire incident typed out. I'm going to send that to you. However, I could have probably went public with this by, by now, but I've seen how this was played out previously. Last year, March, he was, um, this girl from overseas exposed, exposed him, basically. She said that, um, Oh, the sex in scandal that was in last year, March. That is, I don't know if you know about it, but I don't know. I don't know who is behind this account. I know, I know you want it and what's that, <laughs> but I, I don't care as long as I get an unbiased opinion from you. And uh, here's what: my story is not the best one to put on the cover. The stories that I sent you, I think they're more legit. I still blame myself want to know for what happened. That is why I said that. But I will share it with you. And I, 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 I hope, well, I know it will be confidential. Yes. But that's all that I have to say. That's all that she has to say. She contradicts herself in this uh in this prepared script that she read from, this prepared PPP script that she read from, Miss Washington, I know a lot of things going through your mind at this point in time from the contradictions, of course. Go ahead, please. I, I mean, it's two inconsistent statements, first of all. Um, and the first uh, statement where she's trying to get her story out to Melly Mel, she's basically saying, um, you know, she wrote, Didn't write anything and you could listen to the voice so the public could make their own judgment call because that voice on the video that we heard and the one in this um, interview or whatever where she's reading the statement the voices sound identical I'm no voice expert but I guess the public could be their own judge of whether or not they believe is the same person I believe based on what I heard it's the same person and you know two inconsistent statement and most times in, in criminal law, your first statement is generally deemed to be the truthful one, because the theory is if something happened to you and it's recent, you're more likely to be able to recall the truth sooner rather than later. So and you could hear from the statement she's saying she she's concerned. And I said it earlier that she must have been concerned for her own safety. And if she's going to be recanting now changing the story from what she originally said, I believe some form of compensation would have passed here. But again, Mark, I'm saying this statement that she makes here is not binding legally, period. This statement should be completely disregarded because she does not have any parent there. She's just making a statement. She's on the age. The age of competency is the age of minority. When you reach the age of 18 in Guyana, then you're free to make a legally binding statement to the public. 
I don't know where the parent is in this in this uh, statement that she's giving. I don't see a parent say, I give consent for her to make this statement. So this statement could be challenged in any court because she's under age. She needs a parent to come and make a statement like this. And I'm still, my, my position is the same. This cannot be of her own free will. There must have been some sort of duress, undue influence. By, she could have been unduly influenced by money, by something. Because I'm not sure any rape victim, anybody who is a victim of rape, would be willing or willingly come forward unless they feel like their safety is in jeopardy or something is in jeopardy for them. Come to the public and recant their story. It just doesn't seem logical at all. And like I said, I maintain whoever did this, whoever is behind this, shame on you. You're disgraceful. You're a disgrace to the people of Guyana because you're shamefully taking a potential witness and put her in jeopardy by making her read this statement. Shame on the PPP if they're behind this. Shame on Daramal if he is behind this. And indeed, the international community need to take a look at this. And whoever published this on their Facebook page, that they're, if they have a US embassy, a US visa, that visa needs to be revoked. Uh, Kretek, Kretek doesn't have a US uh, visa. He applied maybe two or three or four times and they have turned him down all time rightfully down um, and uh, for questionable reasons i suspect but that's another story we can discuss some other time but he uh this appeared first we saw it on his platform and obviously we knew it was coming and so what he did he removed himself out of the jurisdiction he went somewhere in Suriname to sit down and hide while this uh video released um so let us continue please with this tape uh for another minute or so please which was sent to several media houses and media personalities unfortunately the other media houses did not publish my third statement but were quick to publish about the social media letter written by a fake account this is very obvious to me that they're more focused on on truths to scandalize people. Yes, Kaichor News front page. A letter with no signature, but the one with the signature was completely ignored. Since this most recent statement by myself has not been met with public acceptance, I am seeing this for the final time with my face now shown for all interested people to see that I categorically state that there was no sex and the gory details of the alleged event did not occur. These allegations have caused me and my family great. All right, these allegations, Miss Washington and others who are watching, these allegations now let's get back to a video recording uh, the voice purportedly um, we're hearing that it is hers so if you read this you would understand what exactly i meant when i said my story isn't the ideal one however he met me when i was 50. you know what this man told me i wanted to fuck you since the moment i saw you yeah However, I was 16 when it happened. He told me that when we were having sex. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't want this to be about me. My main objective of this is basically so he can, he, I just want him to be exposed for the person that he is, right? I don't, I, I, I personally, don't want this to be about my 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 just my experience i i know i can't do this by myself i mean i got social media of course i got a bunch of people on there 
All right, Miss Washington, you heard it there. Uh, she said that uh, obviously she was being groomed for this. She did say that, but he say that, but she was hustling. Uh, he was hustling her according to what we heard there since she was 15. Uh, in that uh, prepared speech, because any you know, any idiot would say that yes, she prepared it, and because she said she prepares it, prepared it, uh, only an idiot would think that she's telling the truth when she said that she prepared it. It's a political speech she gave there, and basically to attack the opposition, to attack the Amerindian um, organizations that came out against. Uh, what was uh, the ministers accused of doing, and all manner of things. But you heard her just now. She has been admitting these things, and now the denial. Your take on what's happening there again, Miss Washington. Again, um, Mark, undue influence, duress, those things are real. Undue influence, where somebody in a particular position influences somebody to change a statement. Again, she does not have the competency legally to change her statement without her parents' permission. So again, her coming out and say these things and, and making it to the public that she lied to the police and she lied to everyone else. Again, no one can take this statement. The statement has no validity, yet zero validity when it comes to the law. It would not stand up unless her parents agree and consent and say, well, she is entitled to go out and make the statement. I hereby consent to have her come into the public domain and make the statement. And again, the parents too would be responsible for witness tampering because is no way in any civilized country. I mean, Guyana, we do have civilized people, but we know the PPP is very, very uncivilized, very unscrupulous to take a rape victim. I mean, this is, I mean, it's almost laughable that any person would take a rape victim and have them change their story. And, and the, the part about it that Guyanese people need to focus on is not just any rape victim, it's a victim under the age of 18 that the PPP is taking and using as a political pawn. And this is wrong. I mean, it's really despicable. And I'm saying somebody must have influenced this young woman with either money or something. This is on you influence or duress any of those categories this falls right into this a garden variety of that and it's wrong whoever is doing this whoever is behind this whoever is responsible for this they need to be held accountable you, you do know. not take a, a rape victim and put them in the public to recant their statement like this you just don't she's a she's a minor she's not an adult you know, the funny thing is, though, that people who don't understand the law, and some of them are on the uh, platform yabbing away because they don't understand the law. They're not smart enough to understand the law. Uh, they might have some basic little bit of common sense, but they just don't understand the law. And the other side to look at this, this little girl, 16-year-old girl, I'm quite sure some of the big men out there in the audience who are defending uh, Dharam Lal and, and accepting what this 16 year old girl, uh, God forbid, you know, if this 16 year old girl was their daughter, they would have been talking a different story now than some of them who are defending Dharam Lal and who are basically uh, trying to say that it is okay what this little girl done. You know, if this, if this story was closer to their home, God forbid, they would have been talking a different story. Lots of idiotic statements from some big men tonight the thing uh, is the thing the thing is why those older men would be making those statements Mark. Well, there's a reason why yes. older men some older men well the ones who are making the statement nice. mark the there's one reason, i said yeah. the reason why those older men who they're making those statements is because they they live in a society where it is deemed correct to have you know a sexual relationship with a minor so a lot of them are stuck in the past. The, you know, while people are becoming more and more developed countries are becoming educated and they're realizing you're not competent to make a decision at a certain age as to whether or not you're going to engage in a sexual, a sexual activity with an adult male. So in, in America, this would be endangering the minor of the welfare of a child. She would not be able to give consent here. But in Guyana, they allow you to give consent to somebody almost more than twice your age because Darren Lal is somewhere in his 40s. And this is a 16-year-old child. So we're looking at somebody 
20 something years older and this girl is under the age of six under the age of 18 so they're normalizing it because this is what they're used to in Ghana so when you're so used to something that is wrong morally wrong uh, reprehensible you cannot see it any other way because them themselves are probably engaging in this type of conduct and they're thinking it is okay so if they're coming on here and making any idiotic statement is because they're complicit in this type of conduct they're I'm condoning very, it because, because you would not see something of this nature and say oh yes because first of all she made a statement earlier she this described in detail she talked about the the room she described what the room looked like the police went back the room was painted how could people not see right through this you have to be blinded or completely immersed in you know lawless conduct that you cannot see that this girl is being used as a political pawn that's the only thing we can see here it's this statement that she's now making is far different from the one she sent to Melly Mel. She confessed that she should she couldn't do this alone. She wrote in great detail. She dis, she knew where Dam Lau's house is. How does she know where Dam Lau's house is? How could she describe a room in the house? And then he went he went and he painted the house over. Why is there even tape recording of her and Dam Lau going to a hotel? Why is that even circulating? Why is it even available if there was no truthfulness to the allegations that she had intercourse with Dam Lau? And why would she even record a statement and send it to somebody she ne she has never even met the person that she sent the statement to she wrote and she spoke so you've heard the voice and the public could make their own decision as to the similarities in terms of what you're hearing her saying now versus the recordings that she sent when the situation was much more recent than it is at this point so people should start thinking either this girl is on some sort of drugs maybe somebody give her something but this is not right. Whoever is behind this, they should be prosecuted. This is witness tampering, interfering with a situation where this case could have been potentially prosecuted. But now they're putting her in the public domain to make herself look very ugly. Very uh, ugly. Absolutely. Shame and disgrace on the PPP, the criminal PPP, and all those who uh, opportunistic individuals, soup drinkers who are supporting and agreeing with them on this particular issue. It's always about the money for uh, these individuals. But Miss Washington, as we go back into, um, we want to go back to, sorry, let's continue hearing what, you know, the prepared text coming from Freedom House, the prepared text. Let's continue, please. Emotional harm and tremendous embarrassment. Unfortunately, for the curious, I will not justify my words because I can say one thing. It was justified to those who needed a justification and in my opinion, that is enough. All I would say is this entire situation was forced upon me by people who I have never met or people that know me personally enough to act in my best interest. It was never- Take a shot at that. It was forced upon her and What's I have here? no clue because this this entire statement must have been written by some sort of nitwit because I don't know how a situation could have been forced on a rape victim who contacted um, social media influencers, who went to the police station to make a report. I mean, who could have forced her and her family to go make a police report because we know a police report was made. And we do remember, I do want the people in Guyana to recall that a police officer, even before this hit the public, a police officer was sent to her home. I guess at that point, Dharam Lal became aware that there was the possibility that she would have gone and made a police report. And that police officer turned up to the home of this, um, this um, victim and tried to tell her not to pursue, not to move forward. And she still went ahead and moved forward. Who in the name of, you know, I don't understand what is she referring to because this particular statement had to have been written by somebody who didn't think it through correctly because no one influenced her in the beginning except for the police officer who turned up at her home and tried to get the family not to have her press charges against Daram Lal. 
Other than that, I am not aware of anyone who tried to influence this young woman one way or the other. It would have been her and her parents, her and her parents. And then she went into protective custody. So, and I'm sure while she was there, the protective custody, whoever was in charge of her, the caseworker, never tried to force her to go make a false statement because that's not their function. That's not their job. Their job is to ensure that she would have been protected and that her tech integrity was kept intact. Whatever her truth was, would have been told to the police. So I'm not sure what and how this person who wrote the statement would have believed anything would have been forced on her. The only thing the guy and these people did is stood up for her, stood up behind what she was claiming. They didn't force anything on her, but they stood behind her and support her story. So I think this is really, really obnoxious though. Whoever is behind this, this is very, very distasteful on your part. I mean, you should be ashamed of yourself, whoever is behind this, who wrote this statement and forced this young woman to say whether it's force or whether it's duress on due influence, whether she was compensated. We don't know, but it's giving she was compensated at some point for coming and making a statement like this after everything else that transpired. It's no way that she would have lied in the beginning and now be telling the truth. How could the guy and these people even trust? Anything that is being said on this statement, because look at what it's saying. It's just a bunch of fabricated stuff. You know, no, and, no and you, know, you know what Miss Washington uh, well said, and this is a deliberate act on the part of the PPPC to divert attention to all of the other massive corruption around the country and the stealing of monies, hundreds of millions of dollars, our oil wealth, wrong deals. And uh, even with the Reuters report uh, exposing the Mohammeds uh, for uh, with allegations of money laundering, uh, drug dealing, and all these manner of things, uh, this and and the PPP probably uh, Jack Deer and, and and they might be sitting there and smiling and saying, "Look, look at how we got them!" Diverting attention from all the other things that's happening and the corruption in the country uh, that's also part of what's happening here too right huh it is that's why i said it's a trick it's a trick you know the pbb is using this because this this had started to take a debt of its own no one was really focusing on this story anymore after you know she decided she was not going to prosecute this was taking a debt of his own and then suddenly they push this back into the public eyes. I think it, the, the only thing it's a ploy is a plot on the part of the PPP to divert attention from the real serious issue, the money laundering, the drug trafficking, the, the, goal, um, the goal smuggling. They're trying to divert the attention of the Guyanese people. They don't want people focusing on Mohammed. They don't want people to focus on those because a lot of those people in the government are rubbing shoulders with the Mohammeds. They're doing business with the Mohammeds. So I think a lot of them are very concerned at this time that if we keep focusing on this story, that the FBI might start focusing on some of them. I think some of them are right now, a lot of them are getting cold feet with this story. So they're trying to divert the attention from this so that no one will keep speaking and highlighting the fact that even the president, Jagdio, a lot of those in, in public offices are in very close proximity to the Mohammeds and they are doing business with the Mohammeds. And I believe if this got up, it's going to be real serious trouble for all of those who are engaged in any type of gold smuggling, money laundering, drug trafficking. So this is what they're trying to push now. Go get a false statement and push it out to the public. Go get a false statement that is not even binding. Illegally, it cannot stand by a minor, force a minor to read something that is blatantly false. And, and you know, it put, paints her in a really bad light. And not only that, the person who forced her to do that, it made that person looks so despicable. So I, so I think this the person is, just... is despicable. We already know they have a lot of these despicable, dirty mind individuals uh, uh, who are cruel enough to do exactly that and to condone these sort of acts. Uh, sometimes you wonder about the mindsets of those individuals, uh, dirty mind indeed, cruel mind indeed, and we know it came directly from uh, the madman, uh, consider himself a madman, a psychiatric patient out there in Guyana. Uh, 
you know, uh, you he, has to be, he has to be to put a statement like this into the public. He has to be because he didn't consider the legal ramifications of taking us. They, they, they don't understand that. But when we look at what's uh, what's uh, the the rights of the child, uh, the rights of the child, sorry, uh, what the UN Article 39 states, parties shall take all appropriate measures to promote physical and psychological recovery and social reintegration of a child victim of any form of neglect, exploitation, or abuse, torture, or any other form of cruel, inhumane, or de de degrading treatment or punishment or armed conflicts. This is what we are seeing happening with this girl. She's 16 years old, for crying out loud, 16 years old. In closing, Miss Washington, uh, where do we go from here as a people, as a nation, in protecting our little girls and our little boys from the predators, the sexual predators, the pedophiles? Lots of them are out there in Guyana, and some of them are, most of them, or all of them, are shameless. Where do we go from here as a nation, please? I think it's hard to protect children under the current regime, under the PPP. It's it's extremely difficult. Because one of the ways, the basic starting point to protect children is teaching them first. Knowledge is power. And if you sit down and you have conversations with children and tell them, you know, explain to them the things that are acceptable and the things which are not acceptable and the things which an adult should not be doing and what is permissible by an adult. I think that's the basic starting point to protect children by enforcing the right thing to them. Like, teaching them what is right, what is acceptable, you know. And once we start imparting knowledge into children, I think they become aware and they, they begin to understand, like, what is right. And all the situation you see that is going on in certain communities in, in Guyana where children are being exploited sexually is because of the lack of knowledge. The children are not knowledgeable. So when an adult comes with something inappropriate, like what Dharam Lal did to this young woman at 15, or what age he told her that what he wanted to do to her since then. If she, if somebody had teach her, like, listen, an adult is not supposed to be a 40 something year old man has no business in a bed, in the bed of a 16 year old child. He has no business, he's a pedophile. And if we start teaching these children what an adult should not be allowed to do and why it's important that you stay clear of a, of adult men or adult women who might be, you know, pedophiles. If you start teaching them these things, then they'll start understanding. And that's the starting point, teaching our children. A lot of times it's because of ignorance they get involved into things with, with adults that they should have no right or no business getting involved in. Lack of knowledge. So I think if we start by teaching them, and then the second thing we have to is get the PPP out of office, please. Because the PPP is not about children's rights. They're not about protecting children. If the PPP was about protecting children, they would have came out and spoke out against this um, release by this 16-year-old child. They would have spoke out against it. They would have said whoever is behind this needs to be prosecuted or be, you know, this, this should be some sort of repercussion because that person is endangering the welfare of that child by putting her to read something that they know to be palpably false. They know it to be wrong. And the PPP, no one, even the president who claims that he's all for women and children's rights, he claimed that in a, a recent, um, uh, he did not come out and speak out about this uh, this release by this young woman. No one cares. The, the people in government don't care about protecting the welfare of a child. So that's one of the starting points. The first one is teaching, and the second one is removing the PPP. The PPP is not about protecting any Guyanese, not about protecting children, and certainly not about protecting women, period. So I think that's where we have to start, Mark, by protecting, teaching the children, and then get the people out of office who are not, you know, going to be defending our children who don't stand for righteousness or justice. Well said, Miss Washington. And for those of you who are looking at the time as we prepare to pull the curtain down, um, we will pull the curtain down. People are asking for, uh, what is it, the donkey for tonight, right? Uh, the donkey, indeed. Um, we should give Audi the donkey tonight. 
right? Adi seemed to be busy <laughs> tonight. Uh, we should give him the donkey, right? Um, maybe he deserves that. Um, businessman. Adi, Adi is probably the person behind um, the scene who is responsible who, for that. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe business is a bit slow at... Um, that looks like a fake account. You can business recognize a fake account. Business, from this a, business might be a bit slow at Game Express uh, on North Road there. But um, before before we go, uh, before we go, um, I have Rhonda on the line, and Rhonda wants to talk something about this guy here. Uh, Rhonda, go ahead. You're live. Good night. You, yeah, what what the, what's the situation with Udu? Now remember, I had my case with the problem also, so I was trying to get some mom when he had to get this jacket. And he told me that he would have made contact, but I got to give him some money anyway. He collected $25,000 some, and still we going to get the jacket. Then now last night I look and I see him out there talking for uh, mom, the mom. Is. So I don't know if these people paying to talk because right now, I would be happy if I could get the $25,000 towards paying back the money that I had to borrow to pay the $500,000. So people got to be aware of this man. So, got to me, he's a confidence stuff. So wait a minute. He, according to you, he took $25,000 from you to do what? To get my um, the jacket because... He had to get it so that I could have paid the fine. And he said he knows somebody and he would have get it for me. But still he didn't end up getting it. <laughs> so Miss Washington, you heard, according to Ron, the lane is saying that this guy, Udo, um, who was bashing the uh, the USA and praising his uh, his God, uh, Azhar Din Muhammad and them, uh, went to this lady, according to Ron, the lane, went to her, uplifted $25,000, $25,000 to go and, and make a, a, a jacket disappear. Make a, a jacket disappear, you know. Make a jacket disappear. You know, that that is fraud. So we know why he's defending the Mohammeds now. Now we have part of the answer because he himself is engaging in fraudulent conduct and he should be prosecuted because if this gets out, that he is in the business of making um, file jacket disappear. He got to be, he needs to be prosecuted. He's being exposed. He should not have come out to the Muhammad defense. No one would have known that he was engaging in fraudulent conduct in criminal activities. So we know birds of a feather flock together and people who yes. usually. Sorry, go ahead. People who usually you know, engage in a specific type of conduct, they would be willing to defend people if they hear that something similar or worse is going on in other people's um, life. So I think we know why he's coming to the defense of the Muhammad, because he himself has engaged or still is engaging, as we probably speak, in criminal activities. That is fraud. He's not supposed to do that. Wait, I mean, this is a serious business, Miss Washington story, because he went to this lady. Um, this lady was confused. Five hundred thousand dollars is a heck of a lot of money, right? Five hundred thousand dollars, and he went there to her, saying that he's going to pull a Houdini. It's here, it's gone. It's here, it's gone. So and it's, when, it's, when she looked around, the only thing that's gone is her twenty-five thousand dollars. He stole their money. It's fraud. It's fraud. It's criminal fraud. So he uh, himself needs to be prosecuted. <laughs> Miss, 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 Miss Rhonda Lane, anything else? You know, take this opportunity to call on him to return your twenty-five thousand dollars, please. Go ahead. I would like him to return the money because I needed to assist him paying back the boys who paid the money because I gotta refund every cent of the money. So, I have to refund it. Because I got the body who paid for me, they borrow a loan. So I got to repay the loan. It was paid for me, yes, but I got to be paid. And to date, I have paid like $250,000 on the month. 
All right, so Odo, if you're watching, according to Miss Rhonda Lane, uh, you went, you uplifted $25,000 from her. $25,000, and you told her that the jacket would disappear. <laughs> Guy is, is really a strange, <laughs> Guy is a weird place. Miss Rhonda Lane, I'm not laughing at the situation, but it's just how this guy came out yesterday. Hey, let me address ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if that chain probably too tight around his neck or whatever. But Rhonda, uh, we'll stay in touch with you and we'll get more to this uh, story so that um, this guy can return according to you. He took your $25,000 to pull a Houdini on that okay. channel. Thank you, Rhonda. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah. Miss Washington, I don't know what else we can say. I just don't know. Needs, he, he needs to return that money. You see, there's a thing in criminal law, though. There's, there's one thing in criminal law, like, which I, I don't want to say it because I don't want to put Bunda in a bad situation. So I'm not going to say it. I'm, I'm actually not going to say it because... No, but but, but ig ignorance of the law is no excuse indeed. But I think that he... He saw that the lady was under, uh, I don't know, whatever it is, confused, didn't know what to do. And he thought that he, he can take advantage of her, if it is accurate. And I don't have any reason not to believe Miss uh, Rhonda Lee. No. Uh, he just took advantage, he took advantage of the poor woman. That's no, all absolutely, Mark. But the, you see, the problem is, which I mean, I might as well disclose it, right? In criminal law. Yeah. In criminal law, if you engage in any conduct that if you support or you use your money to support something that would have been illegal anyway, you cannot now go and cry foul and say, well, you were a defraud. Because well, she tried, she tried a thing. She so tried the a first thing. problem is Rhonda should not have paid the money to somebody to commit a crime because what he was doing is fraudulent. He can't do what he's claiming. So it's it's too wrongful conduct. So now she can't even get him prosecuted because she was paying him to do something that was wrong. So the only thing she could get is Facebook justice, social justice. She can't get legal justice. This, this, this is something that's happening all the time. They have these uh, these kunumunus just show up and say that they could. It's it's not like she approached him. The woman five hundred thousand is a heck of a lot of money for somebody like Rhonda to pay. And yeah. this who just showed up, uh, you're going to get it fixed. It happens all the time. They're called yeah. They're That's a good way to lose your money because yeah. you're not supposed to pay somebody to commit any criminal activity. And, and, and he now has become a tout for Azruddin Mohammed, a tout. I'm sure Mohammed probably will throw him a little old bicycle, probably give him a new, um, uh, what is it, a, 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 a little kind of chain that he got wrong, bicycle chain he got wrong, his neck, whatever. Look, we're not insulting people, really. We, we just don't do that here. But some of these guys are so ridiculous, man. I mean, was, yeah. you know, Mark, we could put social pressure on him because we could run him off of social media. He could, we could make him delete that account and people could go after him and put pressure that he returned the money. It looks like he is engaged in some sort of business. So we need to make people aware of his, where his, his business goal? is. How is, how is he employed, Mark? I don't know. You got he got asked himself that and probably asked the Mohammeds that, but certainly not business. But anyways, um, I don't know, Guyana, Guyana, Guyana. Um, poor Guyana. Yeah, poor Guyana. exactly. Poor Guyana. This this guy here saying that Guyana gold being smuggled, culprit will face the consequence. Give us a break, Jack. Yeah, give us a break. And then all these stories happening, anyways. Uh, they have this worship, praise, and talent. Hallelujah. Worship, praise, and talent. Let me give them a little plug here. Sunday, the 23rd of July, 10 a.m., someplace, some 5020 Avenue D between Utica and 51 Street. Guest speaker, Pastor Lord Stort will be there. Food and drinks will be on sale. All right. It's a worship and praise talent. Come on, guys. You guys go out there. I'm doing it for Pastor Lord uh, Stewart, and this is my tie I'm throwing here tonight. This is my tie, actually. And, you know, I'm sure the supporters are going to support, Mark, because you have very good, um, loyal um, supporters. They're always here. You know, they're always ready, willing, and able to support, you know, righteous Guyanese, Guyanese people who are doing the right thing. So... I think people are going to go out and support um, the, the worship and praise, worship, praise, and talent. 
Absolutely. Thank you so much, Miss Washington. And, uh, you know, one of the things, uh, even when I was in Guyana, they get court touts. The magistrates know that these guys are touts. Lawyers know that these guys are touts. Uh, police know that these guys are touts. Once they go and talk to you and fix up and do this and do that, everybody, they all know what's happening. And I always found that to be a bit strange. Well, Mike, let me say one thing about that tout situation, you know. Ah, no, listen. Remember? I, no, don't listen. Speak everything. Don't speak everything. Because no, you were listen. The but. problem with Guyana is you're not allowed to advertise. And I personally think it puts the Guyanese attorney at a great disadvantage. I'm living here in the United States. I'm allowed to advertise. You know, advertising puts you above your your um, your your peer. It really does because the more you advertise, the more people become aware of you, your existence. But in Guyana, because they're from the British system and the British didn't believe that a barrister or a solicitor should be advertising their service because of ethical and you know moral reasons, which I think is crazy. And I think they should just change the rule in the Caribbean because the, those lawyers in Canada are stuck. And this is why to get ahead of the game, a lot of them hire touts to help to push their office. Everybody knows that advertising gives you an edge over your ad, over your, your peer it does it really they get, does. Different, they get different categories and i agree with you that lawyers should be allowed to advertise and in guyana a lot of people don't know lawyers are not allowed to advertise and so uh they get some of those genuine touts mind you right who go out and they bring clients to their lawyers and uh, uh, for lawyers and then they get a little thousand two thousand uh, i don't know if you're the two thousand or three thousand type but you are correct that they do have different touts they get touts that could get your jacket disappear. They get toads that will, God, That's not a toad. That's not get, a toad. They get toads that will wink at the magistrate and you don't know the matter disappear. They get toads for some judges also. I know Chief Justice, Acting Chief Justice Ian Chang had a toad. And let me see if any of you in the audience know who um, who the late Chief Justice, Acting Chief Justice Ian Chang's toad was. He had a toad. I'm not saying all judges and magistrates are like that, but one wink, one wink on your jacket, gone. Disappear. All that to disappear, you know. So Udo or Udu or U U U U. Anyway. Udu best. Yeah. Udu he best. Needs, we your need best. to get him, get him yeah. off of Facebook. He's a danger to the public, and people need to know not to go pay Udu best any money to make any foul jacket disappear. You're wasting your time, and you will not be able to recover your money. Do and, not and, pay Udu Bess or anyone to make a file jacket disappear. And even Nigel um, and Durham Lal, even Jack Dale had a tout. He probably still has tout. Sue was Jack Dale's tout. So they all have tout. They all. Anyways, Miss Washington, thank you so much, man. You do a lot at your law firm. A couple of my cousins, people turning up at all over, they're turning up and they're saying that they're Mark's cousin. I have a lot of cousins these days. But how's the law firm coming along? You know, Mark, even with all your cousins, I don't mind. I am just really grateful for Facebook all the cousins. people who are um, supporting me. I'm really well, thankful for all the support and the love that I've been getting. Um, the people of Guyana, not just Guyana, all of the people who are listening to this show and they're in they're in New York. Some of them are in Guyana, Georgetown, Guyana. People tell me all the time. Some of them are in Canada. People tell me all the time. Some family from some other country called them and give them this number and told them to come. You know, even the other day I had uh, two days ago, I had a woman call me. She didn't know, though, that I was already representing the party adverse to her. But she called me and she said, hey, my, you know, my mother gave me this number from in Guyana. She told me um, that I should call you because I have this situation and it's not going anywhere, blah, blah, blah. And she wanted to change the attorney. But I was like, oh, you know, as soon as she mentioned her name, I already remembered. But she didn't know that I was already representing the party adverse to her. So I had to turn it down. But, you know, the situation like this, you know, make me realize how you know, the Guyanese people, how supportive they are, not just the Guyanese, but the listeners, the viewers, um, they're very supportive. And, you know, I appreciate that. And I'm really grateful. That's why I'm always expressing my gratitude to everyone, 
you know, each time I get support, each time they refer me to somebody, some family, relative, friends, whoever. So even if you have a lot of cousins, even if they say they're my cousins, it doesn't matter. Because people, people, look, folks, Miss Washington is a good lawyer. She's a reasonable person. Don't hesitate to give her a call. She will take care of your matters, right? Whether it's medical malpractice, whether it's personal injuries, whether it's divorce, whether it's landlord, whether it's tenant, immigration, whatever it is, she will take care of that for you. She will. She is that lawyer. And even if you go to her and say that um, that you're Mark's cousin, it's okay. We're all re related on this program. We're all related, right? All of us, we're like a family. So go out and support her. Speaking of family, gosh, tonight or today happens to be my sister's birth anniversary. Gosh, how did I? Well, I spoke with her earlier. Happy birthday to you, Karen. Uh, you know, we love you. And um, of course, on her birthday, every year, she sends me a small piece. She sends me a raise <laughs> every year. It's a, it's, a, it's a family thing. It's a family thing. But whenever it comes to my birthday, which is coming up in September, by the way, September 8th, I usually say to my family members and people that I'm Jehovah's Witness for the family oh, because I don't have to give them back anything. Oh, my goodness, Mark. <laughs> anyway, happy birthday to your sister. Yeah. Karen, and she's my cousin too, right? So if ever, she doesn't probably, but if ever she shows up at your law firm and she says we are related, probably we are related indeed. She's my sister, Karen. She's on Facebook, Karen Benshop. Happy birthday to you and God's richest blessings. And if there's anybody else out there celebrating their birthday today, happy birth anniversary to all of you. If you're celebrating your wedding anniversary, whatever anniversary, if you're celebrating your left anniversary, if you get left and you want to celebrate it, just celebrate it, right? I celebrated that a couple of times. Oh, sorry about that. I hope you're still on air, right? Thank you so much, Miss Washington. To you and your family, have a great night. Give my regards to your staff, please. Thank you, Mark. And you have a good night also to you and your thank family. You, and thanks, thank you all the listeners, everyone who shared the link tonight. Thank you so much. Have a good night and God bless you all. Thank you, Miss Washington. And uh, to all to all of you beautiful people out there, um, just have a have a great rest of the night. Gosh, we've uh, spoke about some serious matters, yes, but we smile along the way. Uh, lots of problems, not only in Guyana, but throughout the world. What is life if you just don't put that little smile on your face, right? Put a little smile on your face. You're here today, gone tomorrow. Just like uh, Rhonda Lynn's $25,000 and poor Uru here today, she $25,000 gone tomorrow. It's just gone. Lady, feel it. A tout. All right, uh, whatever else is happening, hey, go on down to, um, where is it I want to ask you guys to go on down to um, Andrew's Supermarket. Go there. They got big sale this weekend, whatever it is. Just go down there, tell the cashier uh, that you heard it from Ben Shop Radio or sing the song Who Talk the Truth loud in, in um, Andrew's Supermarket. Just go on there. Give them some support. You know, they're good people there. Support them. Support them, indeed. And uh, for some of you who uh, might have some, you know, uh, questions about uh, your status, uh, whether you want to file some documents, uh, your I-130, or whether you want to file for your citizenship, uh, whatever it is. And for schools, there they might be young people out there who want to um, get a visa to attend universities or colleges or wherever. Uh, feel free to give us a call. Uh, all documents are being reviewed by a competent law firm. And of course, you know, you got to mention Shellon Washington as well. Um, this weekend, we are planning to do probably, um, you know, uh, all day that you guys can just come into the studio, so to speak. And we will attempt to take care of all of your immigration matters. Right. So. Don't forget to give me a call, 917-714-1082. If uh, we deal with asylum matters, we deal with uh, adjustment of status, and we deal with all those sort of things, mind you. And, you know, we're very reasonable people. And you know what I mean by reasonable, indeed. Very reasonable people. All right. Again, my name is Mark Benshop. We're out of here. Out of here, guys. Have a great night. Uh, we love you guys. and. 
hey, Wayne Caesar, we miss you tonight, but tonight wasn't his night, really, right? Yeah, Wayne Caesar should be back with us tomorrow night. We, it's always a pleasure to have those guys on with us. But for now, uh, what this guy, <laughs> these guys, I don't know why the operator keeps putting these things up, but uh, we'll touch a little bit more about that and other stuff later on tomorrow, right? But for now, God bless you guys. And for all of you fighters out there, uh, those of you who are playing your roles on social media, uh, keep up the good work, keep up the pressure. Uh, we're seeing, we're seeing, we're seeing results. Keep the pressure up, guys. Keep it up. God bless you. And God bless our beautiful country. Basement level vibes with another one, another one. Straight up, blackness I are. I who tell the truth, Mark Benscop, defend the ghetto youth, Mark Benscop, registration is the fruit, Mark Benscop, straight up from the root, Mark Benscop, I who tell the truth, Mark Benscop, defend the ghetto youth, Mark Benscop, registration is the fruit, Mark Benscop, straight up from the root. Mark Benz, Benz, I do it for the love, him not do it for no money, straight up, him attack, educating everybody, big up my friends, and big up my family, turn on the radio, catch the vibes, it's integrity, straight up, Benz, cop stands for unity, one people, one nation, one destiny, free up the truth in the air, even the blind can see, mm. the deaf can hear, the dumb can talk, the crook can walk, boom, I who tell the truth, Mark Benz, cop, defend the ghetto you. Mark Benscop, registration is the fruit. Mark Benscop, straight up from the root. Mark Benscop, I who tell the truth. Mark Benscop, defend the ghetto youth. Mark Benscop, registration is the fruit. Mark Benscop, straight up from the root. Mark Benscop, we are figured around. Grab a seat and sit down. Pay attention. Education, liberation. We are fist and strong. Benscop, the pun. The radio lively up the program. Everybody call somebody and let them turn and tune and pon the radio and catch the boom song. We boom it up already. We have to boom it up again. Expose and reveal them. I who tell the truth. Mark Benscop, defend the ghetto youth. Mark Benscop, radio station is the fruit. Mark Benscop, straight up from the root. Mark Benscop, I who tell the truth. Mark Benscop, defend the ghetto youth. Mark Benscop, radio station is the fruit. Mark Benscop, straight up from the root. Mark Benscop, stop at do it for the love, him not do it for no money. Straight up, him attack, educating everybody. Big up my friends and big up my family. Turn on the radio, catch the vibes, it's integrity. Straight up, Benscop stands for unity. One people, one nation. And one destiny Free up the truth in at the air Even the blind can see mm. The deaf can hear The dumb can talk The crypt can walk Boom I who tell the truth Mark Ben I'm 
Pra quem pensa tudo eu quero 